Welcome environmental science students. Uh, this is Mr. Holland and we are going to give you the summary on the plankton lab notes and the macroinvertebrate sampling that we did in the past couple of days. We're going to describe to you some trophic levels and trophic levels will re be referred to for specific organisms and when we talk about trophic levels we talk about productiveness or the productivity for uh, the passage of nutrients and energy. We talk about primary, secondary, and tertiary consumers. So first we have producers. The producers perform photosynthesis and so they capture energy from sunlight and provide compounds for consumption at higher trophic levels. Then these are the lowest levels, they are plants. All green plants perform this function. After that we find a succession from primary to secondary to tertiary. Tertiary is the third level in the succession of nutrients through the system. So if we list these in a diagram, what we find on the largest portion of this are primary producers. And I'm going to put a 1 with a degree sign there. That means primary, and these are producers. Next we have consumers. The first level of consumers, we see primary consumers. After that, we would have secondary consumers, consumers, then tertiary, this is three, the third, tertiary consumers, and I'm going to abbreviate here, but you know that should indicate consumers. When we take a look at these producers, the producers all are also, these are the plants. So in an ecosystem we have more plants than anything else. The next level, first, uh, or primary consumers, these are usually the herbivores, things that feed off the plants, and there are a large number of those, although certainly never, never, ever as many as we have plants. So there are more plants to support the next level of consumers, and these are usually called herbivores. Herbivores. Okay, the next level then are uh, consumers that feed off of the herbivores, and these are termed carnivores. We have carnivores. And certainly uh, the tertiary consumers. These are things we just look, we're going to call those high level, high level predators. So carnivores that eat carnivores. Predators. I have to fix that. Predators. Predators. Okay. So when we consider this layering of these different levels, these trophic levels, we have producers, consumers, secondary consumers, and tertiary consumers. A terrestrial, meaning on land, example may include grasses, insects, reptiles, and birds. So you have grasses performing photosynthesis. Insects will eat uh, grasses, plants. Reptiles will then eat the insects, and perhaps a hawk or something would eat uh, reptiles such as snakes. Now, talking about our uh, aquatic habitat, this is an aquatic example, starts at the very beginning. Again, just like plants, we have phytoplankton. Phytoplankton have chloroplasts, they're able to do photosynthesis, they are producing sugar compounds, and this starts the energy transfer using these uh, compounds for consumption. So, primary producer, phytoplankton. Then certainly the Primary consumer, zooplankton, the animal type plankton.
this next level, this secondary consumer level, for uh, reasons of simplicity, we'll include fish here. Fish could eat zooplankton, but certainly we could have many other species that would uh, take a place here in the secondary consumer level and consume plankton, at which point then uh, the fish would consume them. That would put fish in the tertiary box. But let's just assume that fish are feeding on zooplankton. And then we could go ahead and put raptors on the top here for our tertiary consumers. And this would be a, an aquatic example. Uh, the raptor's not really aquatic, but um, we could use more uh, aquatic examples that you're going to see in our follow-up activity when we start to uh, color in the poster for where things go. With regard to the succession in nutrients and energy, we'd like to talk about succession. Change over time of an ecosystem structure. For example, vegetation. We could see succession occur starting with plankton in just a puddle, and if the water sustains for any length of time, we could have the development of duckweed, the little floaty plants we saw on top of the water. Uh, that from there, grasses would grow as more debris uh, would build up and turn to what we would term soil. Then we would have some cattails start to grow, which would then yield to maybe willows, which would yield to pine trees and eventually cottonwood trees. And over a long period of time, we would have complete succession to a mature forest, including oak trees.